Hello everyone. So today we will discuss the World Trade Organization and the World Bank if possible. In the last lecture we covered the United Nations. I hope that gave you ample idea about what the United Nations is and also covered a lot of minute details that could be asked in the exam. Now in the World Trade Organization we will cover the point from which the WTO started and also recent issues from which many questions can come both in prelims and also in the mains exam. So listen to this carefully, memorize the facts that I provide you here and you can write us if you have any questions on our YouTube page or also you can send us questions on our Facebook page, Success RBI. So World Trade Organization, what is the purpose of the World Trade Organization? Well, it is simple. It regulates international trade and also solves any trade related disputes between different countries. What does this mean? This means that today there is a lot of trade that is taking place between countries, international trade. We buy a lot of things from China, USA, Europe and other countries and we also sell a lot of things to them. An example let's say is Africa. In Africa there is a lot of oil in countries like Nigeria. There is also a lot of minerals. So India can buy a lot of these minerals and oil for its own use. In the exchange or in uh, for the matter of trade, this will be our imports. On the other hand, India can actually send a lot of other or sell a lot of other stuff such as education, such as software or heavy equipment for construction to Africa. To African countries this will be our exports but there will be sometimes disputes between India and Africa why there will be disputes because there will be some terms of trade that we might not follow or Africa might not follow some African country so those kind of things are resolved in the world trade uh, world trade organization and then there is also rules of international trade so when the countries get together at a WTO meeting they decide a certain set of rules they will follow and those are then ensured between trade that is happening between countries. Now WTO was started in 1995 officially under what is known as the Marrakesh agreement. So you should remember this it is the Marrakesh agreement where the WTO was started by replacing GATT generally agreement general agreement on tariffs and trade. So just remember that before WTO the GATT used to be there and WTO started after the Marrakesh agreement and GATT was removed. The director general right now is Robert Azevedo or Roberto Azevedo. Now what are the recent issues that are associated with WTO? These are very important issues because they are in the news all the time nowadays. Last year the important issue was Bali package. Bali is in Indonesia, it is a city in, in Indonesia where the meeting was held. So in Bali in 2013 when the meeting was held there was a lot of problem that arose because countries like India and other developing countries wanted a peace clause on public stock holding of grains. Now what does this mean? This means that India wanted that whatever grains such as wheat, rice that the government is buying from the farmers under the MSP or the minimum support price regime that public stock holding of grains that the grain that is brought by the government does not come under the WTO agreement. And why does the government want this? Because basically the government is get, giving huge subsidies to farmers by buying these grains on a very low price. Uh, at a market price at a certain price and then selling it at a very low price in the market. So these subsidies under the Bali package were supposed to be phased out across the world so that there is a level playing field that is all the countries that can export or import food grains from wherever it was the cheapest. But that was not in the interest of our farmers in our country because then many grains will be exported, uh, imported from countries like US, countries in Europe or even other countries such as Myanmar, such as Africa 
Australia and this will lead to a loss of job for our farmers so that was a dangerous thing to do and that's why the peace clause was introduced after India demanded that this be included in the Bali package so that its farmers are safe the second thing that was done in this Bali package was the signing of the trade facilitation agreement the trade facilitation agreement was basically an agreement to lower trade barriers what are trade barriers trade barriers are taxes that are imposed on international trade which are also known as duties and there are also non-tax barriers or non-tariff barriers what are non-tariff barriers these are things like quality control and administrative administrative things that are required when an import comes from another country for example the European countries had banned the European Union had banned Indian mangoes from being sent to Europe this was part of a non tariff barrier where they were saying that the quality is not good so we will ban it so just remember the trade facilitation agreement was signed in which trade barriers were removed or lowered and the world trade can be enhanced by over 1 trillion dollars now the more important issue is the Nairobi round which has just happened in 2015 in Nairobi which is the capital of Kenya and also the largest city of Kenya in Nairobi there was a lot of discussion about the Doha development round so this is a little confusing so let me tell you slowly what is Doha development round and why it was discussed at the Nai 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 Nairobi round so the Doha development round is an old discussion that has been going on in WTO for many years about many different kind of trade related aspects and issues between the developed countries and the developing countries the developing countries want that the Doha development round should be discussed to bring out the issues regarding agriculture subsidies because the Doha development round discusses the issue of agriculture subsidies on the other hand countries like US and Europe European countries European Union want the Doha development round to be over because they think that agriculture subsidies is not a topic that should be discussed anymore and we should now talk about e-commerce things like e-commerce things like IT and services which are in their interest so this is the main fight in the Nairobi round where the developing countries want to discuss Doha development round while the developed countries want to finish talking about Doha development round and want to move on to the next topics one of the things that might come in the exam you should remember is special safeguard mechanism what is special safeguard mechanism this is what developing countries want to get signed it is the right to curb unforeseen surges in the import of heavily subsidized farm products through tariffs and permanent solution to the public stock holding issue so basically it is the SSM allows developing countries or any countries to put duties on any import of farm products from other countries so as to protect their own domestic market so why do developing countries want this they want this so in that so that if the price of some say you are exporting milk say India starts exporting milk from the US because US milk is cheap and it keeps going down and down in price then Indian milk industry will get wiped out and there are millions of people in India who are dependent on the Indian milk industry so in that case India will use the special safeguard mechanism to ban not to ban outrightly but to put tariffs on the US product so that it becomes of higher price and hence our domestic industry will be saved this is very important because this will allow developing countries to safeguard their own local population that is producing farm products I hope this is clear if it is not please write to us and we can discuss this even more now the next institution of importance is the World Bank 
the world bank has a very simple job to do which is to promote development and reduce poverty in the various developing countries it is part of the un system president is jim yong kim please remember this please also remember this is very important this kind of questions come there was a report that came out in 2015 from world bank which is known as mind society and behavior so they might ask you which is the report that has come out they will give you four options so mind society and behavior remember this has come from the world bank headquartered in washington dc us now it comprises of five institutions there are only two which are important which you should remember which is ibrd and ida others are not that important ibrd is international bank of reconstruction and development this offers loans to developing countries that are of middle income so country like india will come into ibrd but ida international development association offers loans to countries that are very very poor developing countries that are very poor so this is the difference this is for middle income this is for poorest poorest uh, countries the others are not that important so i will not discuss but please just take a look at them quickly on wikipedia page you can take a look but not very important now we come to the international monetary fund this is the last organization that we will discuss it was formed in 1944 at the bretton woods conference in usa so i discussed before when i was discussing the un system that in 1945 when the world uh, the world war 2 was over many international organizations were started to enhance cooperation between countries so in 1944 one of those organizations was international monetary fund now what is international monetary fund monetary fund it's simple it is an organization that helps to avert any kind of financial crises in the countries so you must remember that in 1990s there was a huge crisis in asian countries known as the asian crisis which is thailand vietnam indonesia and these countries were going through a massive currency crisis so international monetary fund monetary fund came in and helped these countries so this is the kind of work that the imf does it is kind of a central bank for the for the entire world the president is christine lagarde now how does m imf work various countries put money into the imf which gets converted into sdr or special drawing rights which they can withdraw in the time of financial need so this is basically a mechanism for imf to work where every country puts money in it and in proportion to that money they will get the funds when they require them the sdrs were created in 1969 and there are four major currencies in the sdr you should remember this usd us dollar is 40% japanese yen is 30% euro is 11% pound sterling of uk is 8% now recently the chinese renminbi was also added in october will also be added in october 2016 this announcement has been made so you should remember this that the chinese rmb will be added at 8.33% so there are total dollar 285 billion in sdrs today and india has 2.8% of the sdrs this is important please remember the sdr part this could come in the exam because now there are five currencies instead of four so there are now five currencies now people sometimes get confused in the difference between world bank and the imf it's very simple imf aims at stabilizing the world economy but the world bank aims at promoting development across the world basically imf is like a central bank if something wrong happens it will try to stabilize the world economy by giving sdrs by changing the monetary policy in that country etc by coming out with various plans financial plans but world bank has a very different aim it helps in development it helps in reducing poverty so it will focus on building infrastructure starting various kind of programs that can help in reduction of poverty so imf is a purely monetary organization which focuses on crisis management while world bank is a development organization that focuses on increasing quality of living infrastructure and capabilities of developing countries so this is the final slide please look at this lecture 
to clarify any of your doubts and you can also reach us out directly so that we can answer any of your queries. Thank you.